Good day. My name is Dr. Sharian Supal, and I would like to welcome you to the School of Veterinary Medicine's Lunchtime Star Seminar Series. Before I introduce today's presenter, I would like to begin with a message from our director, Dr. Carlo Georges. Hi, everybody. And of course, welcome to our School of Veterinary Medicine online lunchtime series. And today we are having such a very hot topic. It's, it's relevant to most of, most of us in the, in the teaching for self, um, the teaching area. And of course, we have with us our own Dr. Lisa Benjamin presenting today. So please sit back and relax. And I hope you have lots of questions for us. Dr. Supol, I'd like to invite you to unmute your microphone, please. Thank you, Dr. Georges. Now I'd like to introduce our staff member who will be presenting today, Dr. Lisa Benjamin. Dr. Lisa Benjamin is a lecturer in veterinary public health, epidemiology, and food safety. Dr. Benjamin supervises One Health projects for year two MBBS students. Her interests include zoonotic diseases, antimicrobial resistance, food safety, and the use of educational technology in health. She is currently working on a campus research and publication grant to evaluate the Minion sequencer for food safety and antimicrobial resistance related whole genome sequencing in a, laboratory, in a laboratory located in a developing country. She is also pursuing her master's in educational technology and the aim of her thesis is to create and implement an introductory food safety course for, sm for small food and beverage businesses in Trinidad and Tobago in the learning management, in a learning management system. Please welcome Dr. Lisa Benjamin. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. This afternoon, I'm sharing with you my presentation on a survey of MBBS students' perceptions about the switch to online learning during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Yes. Okay. So let's go along now. First, I'd like to thank my co-author, year two, uh, One Health Research Group students from 2019 to 2020. These students work very hard and I just have only good things to say about them. The objectives of the study were to describe the perceptions of MBBS students at the St. Augustine campus of the UE about the switch to online classes during the COVID-19 pandemic and to explore the attitudes of students to the use of flipped classrooms, which um, are learning for their courses in the first semester of 2020 and 2021. Now, Prior to the pandemic, there were efforts to introduce online learning to medical school classes, and some research was done in this area. However, with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, we know that throughout the world, education was disrupted because of 
need to introduce uh, preventive measures, social distancing, et cetera, to prevent the transmission of disease. These changes in education, however, have the potential to isolate millions of, stu um, of students, whether children or adults. And this is as a result of the inequities which it, the pandemic, and we will uh, touch on some of them as we go along. So there has been a lot of research as well done on student re retention and the failure of student to pay attention to and mitigate those factors which lead to withdrawal of students from courses is believed to have long-term consequences throughout the world. Now we know that online learning has become increasingly student-centered over the years. And as a result, it is important for us to understand the student perceptions of their online experience. One distinction that I would like to make before I continue is about the uh, online. So the online learning that we see throughout the world now is what was adopted in an emergency situation. And so in uh, an Ministry of Education town hall last week, Dr. Douglas, who is the coordinator of the UTT um, education, educational technology course, um, wanted to make very clear this, uh, this adopted online learning is quite different from uh, how online learning is normally done with design and implementation. So after this period, when we ask students about online learning, this is going to be part of their uh, perception of what it is, but um, in normal times, the online learning will not be done in this matter, manner adopted and it is usually a, an iterative process. In our emergency situation, most universities throughout the week had, throughout the world had two weeks in order to adopt online learning and migrate their courses to the virtual environment. For this project, approval was received from the Ethics and Research Committee of the University of the West Indies. And we also got the, uh, campus registrar. Our survey was constructed in Google Forms, which was which um, is uh, free. It was administered um, by being posted on social media by a student representative group. The survey was conducted over a three week period between July and August 2020. And our questions were closed ended, open ended and five point like the survey instrument consisted of 36 questions with five topic areas. And these topic areas were, yeah, convenience, accessibility, punctuality, experience, quality of life, study methods, and assessment. And the, the school, the Faculty of Medical Sciences at the UE, the MBBS students um, have course divided into two. Phase one, basic health science program in which students would spend the their first three, three years and then the clinical clerkship in which they will spend the next two years. At the time at which the survey was conducted, there were 1,192 students, um, 953 were continuing and 239 were new students. We analyzed using um, calculations and percentages. We also conducted cross tabulations and chi-squared analyses, uh, goodness of fit, as well as tests of independence. So getting on to our survey results now and having a little discussion about um, what we found. The, on a breakdown, the respondents 
191 uh, MBBS students responded. Most of these respondents were in phase one. So as I mentioned, this is uh, years one to three. Um, and only 3% were from year five. So that is in the uh, phase two, 3% were overall were from year five and most students were from 44%. When we look at the convenience, accessibility and punctuality uh, areas, we find that most students reported that they owned a working advice to access lectures and join online classes. And also most students had um, a stable internet connection, but this was um, percentage was lower than those who are devices. We also asked them about their punctuality and surprisingly 11% of them were less punctual um, to their online classes. Students were also asked if it was more convenient to attend online and face-to-face -face classes and uh, most of them said yes. So in looking at the accessibility and punctuality. Um, with respect to devices, there was only one student who reported in our study that they did not have a working device. And this is less than the 12% of Jordanian medical students in their clinical years who lacked suitable devices. Also, we know that at the University of the West Indies, there's a, a loan facility for devices that was set up to address problem of students who might not have access to um, devices. We did not um, specifically ask students if they shared their, their devices. However, um, you know, it is plausible that even if a device was uh, purchased for a single student, the student in this emergency situation might have to share the device with other household members. And so the uh, conflicts of schedules, in the case of synchronous lectures, and hence this is one of the reasons why um, they suggested uh, use of asynchronous um, resources by uh, taping the lecture and putting it up so that students can look at it at their own time. This is why this might be beneficial to um, students. With connectivity and access, we know that, that there had been negotiations um, the major service providers. However, um, globally, internet access and quality are considered to be barriers to the adoption of online learning. So even in developed countries such as the US, um, some students living in rural areas also face these challenges. And also in the UK, in a, a large study that was conducted, of 39 UK registered medical schools, 27% uh, identified poor internet connections as a common barrier to the use of online platforms. So here again, we have you know, the asynchronous um, modality as being um, useful. With respect to punctuality, um, you know, it's expected that if students don't travel to classes, then the um, punctuality should improve, but, but that there might be distractions in the households and uh, the, the students' own reactions to the emergency situation, for example, stress can help to determine, you know, whether or not they um, attend classes on time. So we move on now to the other category of experiences that students would have had in class. And we, when we look at um, students, if it was easier for them to pay attention during in online classes as opposed to face-to-face -face classes, um, roughly half of them said uh, yes and no. And similarly, with um, understanding material better when taught online than when taught face to face, the same similar um, half to half, half, half and half response. So 
asked if they thought that they retained mat, uh, material better following an online class than following a face-to-face -face class. Um, and if it was easier to be interactive and participate in online classes. And um, all of these, those who said yes and who said no were not, the numbers were not um, significantly different. So when we drill down, um, fine, why students might have said that it was e not easier to be interactive and participate during online class. Um, students uh, said things that fell into, into the following categories. So uh, noise and interactions in the home learning environment. So, and uh, the one student said background noise and interferences affected concentration. Um, they had difficulty focusing online and this um, referred to other distractions like um, scrolling on their phones. Some students said that they don't participate in class, whether it's online or face-to-face. -face. Um, other reasons why students would have said no, they, um, it wasn't easier to be interactive and participate um, had to do with internet difficulties, whether for the student or the lecturer. So, um, for example, one student said unstable internet. Um, also, students expressed um, discomfort or being uncomfortable speaking without seeing the lecturer and the students. So, in particular, the student said it was more nerve-wracking as others would clearly be focused on you as you spoke as well as see your name displayed. So, in that sense, I was less inclined to participate. And there were students who preferred to ask questions privately and directly and they it was uh, problematic for them when they could not um, locate the private setting and some of them thought the whole process of emailing questions uh, quite um, cumbersome. So then look environment of um, the school for face-to-face -face classes we find that um, about 50% of the students said that, um, you know, they found that it was positive. So they, and they, they responded four and five. So this is a scale that goes from one least to five most. In addition, Students were asked um, about the environment in which they were um, in when they were doing online classes and if they found that environment was um, conducive to learning. Slightly more of them were found that the, uh, that environment was um, positive. However, um, the difference between that and the school environment Yes, those were not um, significantly different. When we look at motivation now, during this um, COVID-19 pandemic, we find that um, students, more students tended to select one and two, which indicated that they were um, not very motivated to do schoolwork. So we know that um, with the online environment, um, students often say that it is easier to pay attention. They don't have some of the discretions around them. But in this situation that we find, and we know that this is an emergency situation and there are other members of the household who are at home as well and students, the duties that students have um, in some cases increased. So so the environment um, on being online might be easier itself, but then we have to consider what are the surroundings in which the students find themselves. Um, students also said that um, you know the the content material it was e some of them found it easy to understand, and this was because they were able to uh, go over the material, and this is very 
a common response with respect to online learning. Um, so this was also found with Saudi, Saudi Arabian medical students um, during the pandemic where they thought um, that, you know, this was an advantage. So um, the environment, usually when you are designing um, a course, you would take into consideration the, environ the environment. And um, we know that um, the UK medical students also had similar problems where the family distractions tended to be a barrier to learning during the um, COVID-19 pandemic, which we know is still ongoing. So interaction and motivation now we know have been reported as factors which are important for student re retention in online uh, learning programs. And one of the advantages is that um, of online learning, we know, is that someone can engage in it from any location. However, students have long reported feelings of isolation and these have been um, put forward as reasons why withdrawn from online courses. Um, also from the literature, um, ex concerns have been expressed by both students and teachers about whether meaningful interactions can occur in online classes. So um, there was research conducted on it and in particular Dow 2008 um, reported that it of being uncomfortable when you're unable to see fellow students um, has to do with the um, inability at, that, at those times to gauge the reactions of peers. And so we saw this in our study where students, some students said that they felt uncomfortable not seeing um, the lecturers and other students. So traditionally in online learning, there had been a to organize meetups to try to address this problem of isolation. So that, um, for example, in some instances where people live in similar geographical areas, they were encouraged to physically interact. But of course, we know this is not um, a good idea right now. So um, we have to look further for other solutions. And so, uh, his authors, Malem and Volbrecht, suggested that students can engage in meaningful interactions um, when they are assigned collaborative uh, solving tasks and supported group work. So some of the uh, options include discussion groups, breakout room activities, social media, where you could put um, different parts of a course on, on social media. Um, and so group work, but um, supported where they have the resources and well structured. Um, but we know in this situation here um, that there are limitations due to accessibility to their shared devices, um, internet disruptions and so on, which might help to um, make some of these things um, a bit difficult in situations. And so this whole effort must be carefully coordinated because we know also that in our uh, medical field, students have very packed schedules. So any extra work has to be um, carefully uh, introduced. With respect to motivation, we know that um, self-motivation has increased in importance in um, online learning over time. And uh, this is um, related to the adoption of learning theories, which um, are used for design of these um, courses. And so they have moved more towards having the student construct learning. So you have like the constructivist um, theory that might be used um, in, in such instances. 
We also asked the students then um, another category of questions. Did you adopt a new study method uh, or pattern while doing online um, courses during the pandemic? And most students said that they did. And we then asked them, well, which method did you prefer? And they um, did prefer the uh, method that they adopted during the pandemic. So then, well, um, you, why did you prefer these methods? And it had to do with helping them improve their focus, complete material faster, understand the material better, and um, retain the inf uh, information better. So um, one suggestion is that, um, you know, information about study methods can be provided to students to help them adjust to the new normal. Now, quality of life is something that often attracts people to online learning. And so this is one area in which we thought we, we should ask um, students what their experiences were. So we found that, um, students uh, prior to the um, pandemic, um, most of them would travel for 30 minutes to three hours to school. Their um, money spent um, at school, um, most of them between $30 and $100, and this is in um, TT uh, currency. The number of hours that they slept pre-pandemic, 28.8% um, of them slept less hours um, per day. And during the pandemic, the fewer students were in this category where they slept less than five hours and more were more than eight, um, at least quarter of them. Of course, um, you know, they had more time to sleep, but then that might also be um, indicating um, certain problems. So that might be an area to look further into. Um, students were asked if their uh, schedules were more flexible for, to make things uh, time for things other than work, and 91% of them um, said yes. So um, the quality of life, we say, is often cited as a reason for selecting online learning. Less time traveling, you eliminate certain expenses. Of course, you'd have other expenses where you need to um, have your working um, uh, device and so on. Um, the more sleep and more balance um, are perceived as benefits of um, online learning. Uh, with respect to assessments, we asked students if, um, if they had had um, synchronous assessments and most of them did, yeah, 81%. And then we asked them what types of assessments they preferred for final exams. And 52.9% uh, said that they um, preferred asynchronous with um, lesser amounts preferring face-to-face -face written and online synchronous. So going forward now, um, we wanted to know what students thought um, about integrating online teaching as an alternative option of learning um, in MedSci, and we gave them some examples, um, such as, um, you know, adaptive tutorials, virtual models, and so on. And most of them agreed that um, there should be some type of integration. When we asked them um, to give us reasons why they agreed or um, strongly agreed with um, integrating, uh, they gave 
reasons that fell into different uh, categories. So as we identified uh, convenient, more efficient use of time, um, cost savings for students, effectiveness, um, they believe that it can be an effective way of teaching certain concepts. So it's important to, to note that, um, you know, the, the, and that was a, a recurring theme that they um, did not believe that every subject would be suitable, but that there were certain subjects that if they were to, um, online, they would be, it would be effective. Um, as some students spoke about less stress placed on students. When we look at those who agreed or strongly agreed in the clinical years, and there were 25 of them, they spoke about convenience, flexibility, the ability to prepare more thoroughly for wards, that um, their program had more structure that way, and that it allowed them to internalize material better. For those who disagreed now with integration, um, they said that um, medicine is practical and they need their practical skills in the fourth and fifth year. Um, they spoke about, they are concerned about um, interaction. Um, so interactive environment is useful, it's required when speaking to people. Um, motivation, one student said it, it was very demotivating. And then um, devices, internet, um, one student said that they didn't have access to a computer. Not everyone has, sorry, has access to a computer with stable Wi-Fi con connections. So um, we see that on is um, more flexible and it can be um, more inclusive. And so this is falls within, of course, the uh, AAA strategy that we, if we want our university to be a university for all, um, we know that we have people who are affected by the effects of climate change where you have floods and bad weather and, and roads students with families, students with disabilities, and even geographical locations um, where they might not, um, it might be difficult to, for them to go to one location um, regularly. So the online learning really is something that um, should be in the future of, of the university because it falls within what we want to do um, being available for all. Now, it is expected that some of the technology adopted um, by universities, uh, medical universities throughout the world during the COVID-19 pandemic will continue to be used. Um, there is this uh, shared resource, Pivot Med Ed, where um, medical schools have been sharing uh, resources. Um, we also have at this time a 2020 Educate Horizon report um, where they um, look at some of the technologies that they think might be uh, become a reality in education um, in the future. And these include the adaptive learning technologies, artificial intelligence, extended reality where um, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality are used. Um, in moving forward, however, in adopting um, online uh, modality, then um, we want to consider um, the technology acceptance model by David, um, 1989. And in this model, um, he, he says that adoption um, associated with the students' perceived usefulness of the technology and the ease of use of technology. So I think that those are useful um, guides for us as we move forward in, into uh, looking at how we can 
um, adopt technology. With respect to basic and the clinical um, areas at this Faculty of Medical Sciences, we see somewhat of a dichotomy in terms of um, what students think might be um, useful. So some students believe that the um, theoretical areas, which you find more in the um, basic areas might be better online learning. But of course we have, um, you know, you have in the clinical areas, you have uh, technologies that can also be used as in the extended reality and so on. So um, in terms of a huge study that was conducted um, during the pandemic in China um, of 90 medical um, the authors proposed more virtual um, learning for Chinese uh, medical students. Limit some limitations of this um, st the study are that the student might not have been uh, con connected to social media. And so when we sent out our questionnaires, they might not have, um, you know, seen connected on social media. And also, um, we did not examine the assessments. And so when students said that they, they, you know, they studied more effectively and so on, there's no um, confirmation of that um, as a result of this um, small study. So in the future, I would like to um, complete and submit a topic on um, topic to a journal, um, present at conferences, conduct further research into online learning, perceptions, attitudes, uh, use of the flipped classroom in health professions, and explore immersive technologies in public health, epidemiology, and food safety. And um, also like to propose that in our environment, we get more talks been identified as good teachers, such as Dr. Chris Mirage from Engineering, who recently received um, an award. So I really like to uh, thank Group 17, who, as I mentioned, um, worked very hard on this project. And I'll also like to thank the MBBS students who participated. And uh, that is my presentation. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Benjamin, for an informative presentation. So we have some questions from the group chat, from the chat. Uh, first question to you, Dr. Benjamin. Uh, you mentioned students shifted to flipped classroom and blended learning. Could you please highlight on this? Um, blended learning. Uh, the, the blended learning part was for the banded learning part was for the for the future, but um, the what I said was that they shifted to online learning during an emergency period, um, and so online learning um, different um, people introduced it in different ways. So you you had um, synchronous um, classes, and you also had the provision of asynchronous resources. Um, at well, sorry, <laughs> the, the 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 blended learning. Um, so sometimes you would say blended learning has to do with online, and um, they would come into the classroom at various times. But of course, due to our restrictions, students um, were in general coming on campus. Um, so that was. Um, why it was considered as something for the future at the time that the survey was conducted. Okay, no problem. Next question. Do you have any suggestions on the improvement of access to internet? 
that is only something can be um, negotiated with um, the service providers. And um, what it seems is that um, in certain areas of Trinidad and Tobago, there's not um, good coverage. So I think that that, that means um, investment as far as, as those um, companies are concerned and driven by market forces, I guess. And another question, will a comparative study be done for the other schools, including the SVM? Well, I'm hoping that this can happen. And um, of course, you know, we have to get the appropriate permissions. So I have been, um, yeah, hoping that I could extend this so that it can be a source of information and guidance for um, us in different areas, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, what about the use of teams? Um, with respect to... Um, uh, I'm seeing it on the chat. I, I am thinking that... Teams, you, you, uh -huh. Yeah. You mean like um, Teams is, I think Teams is a wonderful um, app. Um, I'm not sure. Um, classes use it, but you have um, resources, you can put up resources, you can um, have chats, you can have meetings and so on. So I, I'm very um, excited about Teams. I'm not sure how widely used it is. Yes. And a further question. Year one students do not have the experience of face-to-face -face teaching experience in the F FMS. Um, how do you compare their perceptions of online teaching to face-to-face -to -face teaching? Well, um, so what it is, is that some of this is prior perceptions. Um, so they, their experiences right now would be more like what they had experienced in, in their previous um, environments, like their high schools previous university courses but um, you know they say that your previous experiences help to influence your attitudes or your acceptance of the current technology that is being offered to you so um, yeah this is um, it would be interesting <laughs> to see what they think in the future yes and one further question, uh, were the 191 participants from year one alone or was it across the board? That was, so like 88% of those were from between years one to three and the uh, rest of them were from four and five. But I said the smallest um, percentage was from year five with students across the board so um so i i'm in that sense you know i don't want to say as much about years as i would the basic years because we know we had more participation from the um, basic years okay and um, just a clarification on the team's question mm -hmm. um uh, the person was dr Ivy was asking Teams in relation to BBC or Zoom? Teams in relation to Zoom. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, I would pick Teams. <laughs> uh, if I would choose one, is that what she's asking? I would pick Teams because I think it, it has, there's more there. Yeah, and sometimes BBC tends to be a bit unstable sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, these are all the questions I'm, I'm seeing. Uh, just a comment from uh, what I'm seeing here. Online classes are better, less distracting, flexible, and convenient. But internet disruption and technical difficulties are a problem. So, and uh, one final one. Uh, this is a good study. 
if online or blended teaching continues, it will be interesting to learn how the students' response or perceptions in um, a similar later study would be, like, for example, next semester. Yes, I'm all interested in, in further research into this area. I find it, find it quite intriguing. Yes. So these are all the questions that I have so far, Dr. Benjamin, from the YouTube channel. And I thank you very much for a very informative presentation. Also, I'd like to thank you all. Well, I'd like to thank the viewers for joining us today. And please join us again this Friday for another staff presentation, this time by Dr. Ganesh. And he would be uh, giving a talk on evolving concepts in small animal fracture fixation. What are the lessons to be learned? Thank you for joining us.